My name's Rusty Sutton. I'm the redneck boat guy. I build two-cylinder racing outboard boats. I build the props to go on them, and we also sail a 33-foot catamaran named See Y'all Later. Hope you enjoy the channel. Good morning, boat racers. This is Rusty back in the house. Uh, starting to sit outside, you know, I wanted to go out on the porch and record a little something. I was laying in bed thinking about this morning, but it was kind of cold. <laughs> so I thought I'd make a fire and sit here and uh, enjoy the inside a little bit. But what I was thinking about this morning was that, you know, some, the stuff that I'm putting out there, it's not necessarily the only way to go. I don't want you to think it is. Uh, you know, some people like a Ford, some people like a Chevrolet. You know, there's more than one way to, to do everything. And what I'm sharing with you is just my ideas. And, you know, if it works with your system, with what you're thinking about, then, you know, you, like if I'm doing something similar or if you're doing something similar to what I'm doing, you might add that extra little piece that I talk about or whatever. Uh, what I'm telling you is uh, I don't presume to say that that my way is the only way. Uh, I'm just throwing some beans out there, and if they grow, that's cool. If not, you know, uh, it'll be something for Russ or my kids to use. Maybe if they ever need anything or want to go with uh, some of the ideas old Papa wanted to do. So anyway, this morning I want to talk about props. Again, this is another prop segment. Uh, first, before I go into the props and talk about it, there's something real important that 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 I want to share with you about apparent wind, and it'll relate to the prop work because flow over the blade or flow across a sailboat sail is kind of similar, and and I like to relate uh, relate things from one to the other, maybe make it easier to explain. What I wanted to do uh, a little bit here is explain what true wind versus apparent wind is. Because that's going to act, I'll talk about it about air, but I'll relate it to the props. And that's why I wanted to bring it up. True wind naturally is if, uh, you know, you're sitting on a sailboat out in the middle of the ocean and you don't have your sails up. Well, the, the wind might be coming from the right, you know, say at 10 miles an hour. Let's say it's coming off the starboard side over there or coming you got a starboard breeze. So what happens if you put your sails up and start traveling forward? Well, that wind angle is no longer 90 degrees. It doesn't, it, you know, from the apparent wind changes. As you start going forward, you're making your own pathway, your own wind. So pretty quickly, that wind angle comes around to like 45 degrees. So if you're going five miles an hour forward and you got a 10 mile an hour breeze directly from the side, that wind is coming from up here. And it's real important when you're sailing. I know a lot of you sailors understand that, or all you sailors do. But an easier way maybe to understand apparent wind is, let's say you're sitting on a bicycle and you feel the wind coming, blowing on the side of your face. Well, what happens when you start pedaling? You don't feel it on the side of your face anymore. You feel it coming at you, right? Blowing your hair back. <laughs> well, that's apparent wind. And... Uh, it's got everything to do with making what I I want to say a prop shift gears. Uh, the way a prop starts out, coming out of the corners, is much different when it's at top speed. And that's why I wanted to bring that up about apparent versus true wind. I got to, yeah, I came back to the recorder here. There was one thing I wanted to change a little bit. Uh, I didn't quite explain apparent water over the blade correctly and I wanted to do a better job with that so that's why this is a little bit different segment here so what happens when a when a what I'm trying to do with with water flow over the blade is is change the angle from acceleration to top end so when that prop is accelerating I've got enough cup going toward the center of the blade where it's moving that water in toward the middle all right it's pulling that cone closed behind that negative air pressure or the negative pressure, trying to reduce the drag and increase my thrust all at the same time by bringing water from the outside toward the inside of that blade and filling in that cone. So what happens though is like I say, the faster you go, the more that angle changes across the blade. 
it can't go in anymore. So that's the two-speed kind of operation that I'm looking to, to go for. Because I know for a fact that, uh, you know, that angle is going to change. And, and, you know, I like doing that kind of stuff. I, I like thinking about, you know, how it works. Like uh, we talked about the boat with the, with the uh, negative air pressure behind it. And I related that to NASCAR, right? Because that makes sense to me. The art, they're pulling a big parachute. How do we reduce that? So that's, that's why I think about things. And, and, and the sailing kind of brought me to those ideas, you know, that maybe I can make a parent wind angle on that blade change and make it shift gears. So I wanted to explain that a little bit better than I did in the first video or the first trial here. And I'll include this here in the middle. So that's what I want to work with and show you a little bit about uh, blade patterns and blade designs and maybe get into water flow over the blade in a light way. Uh, primarily on this one I want to talk about uh, bow lift and transom lift and, and how to build that into a prop. What, uh, what happens on a the prop, there's two ways to build transom lift. One is you build a real heavy pitch right in here. So if that, if that heavy pitch is right in there what happens is when that blade spins and goes down into the water, it jacks that motor up. It hits against the hub right there and jacks that motor out of the water. So if you've got a real heavy pitch right there, you've got some automatic transom lift. Uh, and a lot of people even extend the prop nut out so there will be a little bit more of that effect. So the longer that prop nut is, if your blade comes back, see past the hub there a little bit, you could even get a little transom lift with extra distance back here because it's going to bounce off of that when that thing goes into the, you know, we run half in and half out. So it'll jack itself up out of the water. Another way, which is less efficient, but some people do it, is they open the tips up to where when, it goes, when, when the prop goes down through, it throws water off the end of the blade. And you only need so much transom lift. I don't think you need a whole lot. Anytime you have transom lift or bow lift, you're, it's costing you some straight thrust to do that. Because when that prop goes through the water, if it's not pushing everything straight back, it's a compromise. So everything straight back is, gonna, of course, going to be the fastest in it. So it's best if, you're, if your boat and your trim angle gives you all the bow lift and transom lift you need. But a little bit of transom lift doesn't hurt. I found that it, it actually can increase your speed just a little bit if it's not excessive. Another thing transom lift is bad about is if you're in rough water, it'll blow the back end of the boat out. <laughs> you know, it'll walk you around. It'll, it'll be a little looser. So I think transom lift is really good in moderation. Bow lift, the only reason you'd have bow lift is if you, the, the nose of your boat was already too heavy. And, you know, in the old days, when they were running in big flat dock, the silvers and all of the runabout, you had to kick that thing out to get that nose up, then you did to carry it a little bit. And of course, that was a compromise, but it was the fastest. It, it was what you had to do back then if your boat wasn't set up right. I say set up right. Set up like a modern boat where it'll take care of itself. So that's that's transom lift and bow lift. And one of the other things I wanted to talk about is, is uh, what I feel like, you know, we talked about that uh, transom lift is right there. Let me draw that on there. If transom lift is heavy pitch in that area right there, I want to show you where acceleration is. Or, you know, these again, these are my ideas. I, I, I think it's what I think I know about that kind of stuff. But to me, you could draw a line about right through there on the prop. And everything ahead of that is acceleration. And everything behind that is top speed. So it's kind of like a, this is acceleration shelf, and this is your top end. This is, you know, you, you put as much in there as you can pull. And where that line is, is determined by a couple of things for me. Uh, if it's a real high <laughs> ratio, that hummingbird wing's got to be pretty small. You can't pull a lot of it. It might be pretty small, like on a Yamato. But now on a geared wheel like this one, 
you know, you got more torque coming out there. So, so your high pitch can be a little bit bigger. You can pull it. Uh, in fact, it needs to be because there's more torque involved. But also, of course, with the geared wheel, the acceleration shelf is quite large as well because the blade area needs to be a little bit bigger. And what I found too, if you look at that prop, how it's cupped, and we've talked about blade progression. If if the if the blade progression is very very low, you can't run as much total top top pitch up here. You don't need to because you don't you're not compensating. Of course, the reason we run pitch progression is because you can't ever have all of the blade at the right pitch angle all the time. So it's it's a trade off when you're accelerating. You want the most blade area being totally efficient that you can at any one time. And that's why we said, you know, a, a prop with almost no blade progression is better on top end, but it's not going to accelerate well. But the more pitch progression you have, the higher pitch numbers you can put on that back end right there. And the reason for that is that water is accelerated by this acceleration shelf here. It's gathering up and it's gathering speed right here. So it'll jump higher pitch with more pitch progression. But anyway, that's that's basics on uh, what I think about as far as, you know, your, your top end versus your acceleration. And again, you want it nice and open on the front here. So the apparent wind coming in there, the apparent water is not hitting the back of that blade. Now, one of the things I'm going for, the reason I explained apparent wind earlier, is apparent water over that blade changes from 30 miles an hour to 60 miles an hour. You know, initially, I don't know if you can see, but the water travel, let me draw this here. The way I'm cupping that blade, the water travel is going toward the inside. It's not traveling straight up the blade. I'm trying to pull it in toward the middle. And there's a good reason for that. When when a boat is coming out of the coming out of the water, getting on plane, the lower unit builds a, a cone of open water. And the faster you go, the smaller that cone gets. Well, what I'm doing is I'm trying to draw that water from the outside to the inside as quickly as possible to give you more thrust on the blade. But as you go faster and faster, that water doesn't have time to go in. It's going to go out that blade. Let me draw that pattern. So if you see the difference there, as you get going faster, that water's not turning and flowing in anymore. It's going straight across that blade. That's the only choice it's got because it's, it's going 60 miles an hour across the blade. Like a parent wind on the bicycle, same thing here. So that's how I'm that's how I'm attempting to shift gears on a prop is I want it flowing in and on a lower pitch and and, and a, lo a longer blade area this way and then as it builds and builds it'll lock in more and more on a on a apparent wind type situation. So that's what, all I wanted to talk about really today was uh, you know apparent wind uh, transom lift bow lift. Uh, rake angle has a whole lot to do with bow lift. Um, this prop has very little rake and what, what rake is is built you know uh, angle back on the hub and the reason that that rake angle builds bow lift is you know we run the props real high and when it goes in the water like that if that blade is leaning back when it goes down through there it's scooping water and pulling the back of that motor down in it. It's instead of just pushing forward it's scooping out and the high pressure is pulling the bottom of that motor down. Well, when it does that, guess what it does? If the prop's here and the boat's here and it's pulling down on it, that's giving you bow lift. So that's what rake does for you, is it gives you bow lift. And if you've got a, if you've got a, like an inboard that, you know, that prop shaft comes down like that, you need enough rake angle to compensate to where at the bottom of that stroke, the the you've got a little bit of rake, or you've got at least uh, some positive rake. Uh, if you have negative rake, it's going to drive the bow down. It's going to try to lift it, 
So uh, I like a medium rake. I don't really like a high rake prop. I've never been real successful with a high rake prop because it is a lot of a compromise. It, it digs into that water too hard. Um, so anyway, that's what I want to talk about this morning. And like I say, if my stuff works for you, hey, that's great. Uh, if you've got different ideas, and uh, you know that's great too. I, 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 I'm not here to say that I, I'm the only one that's got any information about ro boat racing. But props are kind of a black art, and I want to just share some of the things I'm doing. Hopefully it'll work for you and be something you'd be interested in. Thank you for watching the channel, and uh, we'll have the next prop video. I want to talk about uh, the difference between a round blade and a cleaver and why I think those uh, work differently. Thank you for watching.